All right. All right, let me put that pop up, that one and that one. Okay. Hi, everyone. Who's ready to sparkle? How's it going? Friday afternoon. Um, I'm not seeing a uh, the chat uh, because I'm going to be hands down so I can help you guys. But uh, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, my name is Kelly DeFries. My, my company is Crystal Ninja. And I'm honored here uh, today to be invited by uh, John Bede and Michaels to do this little 101 class for you guys. Um, if you're not familiar with my company, we're, we're, we're kind of a few things. We're a very small, very efficient team. Uh, we do corporate orders of uh, thousands of items that people want uh, sparkles on to help uplift their brand. Uh, we also do uh, tons of custom orders. You've seen maybe recently a, a microphone on the MTV's VMAs recently that we got to work on. Um, so we do custom any kind of item uh, can be crystallized, uh, and we do our best to choose the right glues and um, make it uh, so that the customer can have this item to for as long as possible. We always want to study our glues, so we do a lot of testing with glues. Um, we also have a training center here in San Diego. If you're um, wanting to learn a lot more about bling in the whole industry, we offer classes, and we offer three-day dojos, uh, and we just submerge everyone into all of the glues, all of the techniques. Um, that way no one's afraid. You're like, what kind of glue for this and for that? So we actually put you through the work um, and and let you touch the glues and let you do the projects. Um, so that's a really good program that we have. And we'll probably be having another uh, three day, maybe in January. So just check the links um, for our events. And I do travel a lot for classes. So um, that coming up next, uh, next weekend, I'll be in Buffalo, New York. I'll be at the John Beat Outlet uh, doing a class there. Um, so that's on the site as well. And that's a hands-on class. We're going to be doing um, a, a, a similar tumbler, a small tumbler like this one, or there's one. Oh, there it is right there. So uh, it's hands-on. I love to be in the room with you guys. And that way I can help, uh, you know, correct anything or answer your questions. You can bring projects to me. I can help you through them. Um, so we do all of that. And then we're also uh, DIY supplies. We have quite a few of our items on michaels.com and I'll be showing those uh, to you today in our, in our little 101 how to bling class. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started. If there's any other questions, Carmi, just interrupt me whenever you want. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, this super cute little lantern that we got from Michaels um, in their homeware, housewares um, area. Um, uh, someone, uh, if you if you follow us, then you know about Boss Ninja Susie, and I should put I should photo it sometime. She has a full wall; her whole wallpaper is all gorgeous pink flamingos, it's like a collage, and in all their eyes is a graphite Austrian crystal. So it's like super sparkly in her office when you walk by. It's so beautiful. So of course, this might be going in her office. Um, but today we're going to be using these beautiful uh, glass rhinestones from Bead Landing, and I'm going to use some larger ones here, the SS30s. So a cool thing about uh, what I noticed about the uh, packaging from Bead Landing that's going to be at um, the Michael stores is they've doubled the amount in the packages. So that's a really great value. Um, the other thing on the back is they have a super cute um, little graphic to help you know how many uh, per square inch. And we're all about um, letting people, uh, helping people learn how many stones they need for a project. Um, there's a lot of math involved and I'm not a math person per se, uh, because it is now my job. We do tons of consults all the time to help people figure out how many stones they might need. Um, and that's a, a service that we offer through the quote form on the site. Um, and so here's a really good example, um, of the mix pack. So I don't have a mix pack in the clear, but I do have one um, here in the, the beautiful citrine. So that's going to have your three sizes and then 1,900 pieces of those sizes. So what that means is you can cover this much space with one mix pack. This is six inches, six square inches, and then a, like two and a quarter inch. So that's a lot of space. And sometimes our projects can be quite large if you're wanting to start like maybe on a tumbler, those can be really big. So this helps kind of a very good visual to see that that's how much space this is. And you might need three to four of these mix packs for a normal size tumbler, because once you figure out that math around that tumbler, um, it can be, it can be, a, it's a lot of uh, surface area. So um, doing the math beho beforehand saves you a lot of time 
um, and a lot of heartache and headache of, oh, I've run out and the store is closed or I can't get any more for two days or whatever. So um, always check your math beforehand. And I wish there was like a, a super simple way to um, just give you guys all the math. But the way my little kindergartner head works, it's just it takes me a lot longer than that. So, um, you know, math is not my thing, but I can totally help you. But I have to charge you. So, so. So there we go. Um, so let's go ahead and start. Um, I'll use the SS30s. The glue I'll be using today um, is a wonderful glue. I've used it for all of my 18 years in the rhinestone bling industry. It's called GemTac uh, from Beacon. Um, and I like to put mine in um, a precision applicator bottle. So we do sell this on michaels.com. And it has like a metal tip and pen. So if you get a clog, you can easily clean that out with this little pen that's inside. It comes with it. It's a tension twist. Uh, we have a video on the site to show you how to use this. Um, and it's super easy to use. It's a nice soft uh, bottle. And I like to keep a napkin near. That way you can kind of test out your your dot of glue, your bead of glue before you begin. Um, and that way you know how much glue is going to come out. It's very detailed. You can do dots, you can do lines, swirls, however you want. And the next thing that I'm going to use today that's also on michaels.com is a beautiful crystal katana tool. So there's lots of pickup tools out there in the world. The industry standard is going to be a um, like a, a, a wax. Um, and this is made with a synthetic wax. Um, the reason why I had to create a tool uh, for myself, and we do manufacture this here in San Diego, Every single tool that you've ever received from us is made here in San Diego. Um, and I had to create something that would last for me. I never in my life thought that I would be making tools for hundreds of thousands of people, but that is part of our job here. Um, it is a synthetic wax on this end and then a precision side on this end. And the way that works is you can just gently touch the top of a stone um, and it works with lots of embellishment sequins it works with even those large glitters um keep it away from mica powder and the um the tiny tiny glitter um if you do get it dirty you can easily clean it with rubbing alcohol um so let me go ahead and put a couple of dots here um across or i'll do a line and i'll show you guys the difference because i have a, lo a lot of glue there and i'll do a thin amount of glue here and let me know if you guys need to have that zoomed in further. I think you do need to have that. Uh, let's see. This one. There we go. Oh, it's backwards on here. Oh, there we go. All right. Very good then. So it's a gentle touch. Just a very light touch is all you need to pick up your embellishment. And that could be anything from a, a rhinestone, a resin rhinestone, um, embellishments, sequins. This tool even picks up cake, dragees, candies, and pearls. Uh, it's used in the model train industry. I mean, there any anytime you're looking at picking up small items, this tool is going to help you out. If you want to help uh, press these down, you can use the opposite side. If you're only working with the larger stones, you can totally unscrew the back end of this and take out your precision end, place it upside down in the barrel, and then place this back on. And now you've got a much wider opening here to where you can actually get a little bit more um, uh, stable on your stones as you're placing them. So when we do car parts and there's those large projects, we actually get rid of that precision end and only use the larger end because we really want to make sure that stones are seated into the glues. Always have your stones nice and flat into the glues and that's going to be your best, best bond. And as you can see, I had some glue, uh, we call that ooze out. When we have too much glue, it really doesn't take a lot of glue. Um, and it will dry clear. So it's not a big deal if you have ooze out. It's going to be, it's going to be clear. And so I've used less glue down here, and it's a much more attractive look. There's not going to be as much oozing of that glue. Um, there's lots of glues that dry clear, or they they uh, they start clear and they end up clear. There's two part epoxies. I mean, Michaels has the biggest wall of glues, and I know it can be quite intimidating. Um, but one thing I can uh, suggest as far as glues. Um, GemTac is such a multi-purpose glue. I've used it on shoes, clothes, not cars. It's not exterior. I would not put it on the inside of a car or the outside of a car. Uh, we do a lot of car parts. That's why I kind of keep talking about cars. There's a car back here. Um, but uh, it's fantastic on so many things. Shoes, um, 
you can use it on shoes. Now you do have to position your stones to have a little bit more space. Um, these are leather shoes. I would actually use the gym tech on the shoelaces or on the fabric part of the shoes. Um, so there's so many cool things you can do with these kind of glues. Um, and there's, they're inexpensive. They're easy to use. So uh, it's great to start out with a, a glue like gym tech, and it really is uh, a great glue to use um, for so, so many projects. And if it's going to be a project that doesn't get a lot of wear and tear, um, Sometimes we like to sand our items and clean them. If it's not going to get lots of wear and tear, then just clean it with rubbing alcohol before you begin to get all that um, manufacturer's um, maybe oils or dirts or whatever. Um, this little lantern right here is just going to be on a sitting on a shelf. So it doesn't have to go through any kind of crazy prep process that we normally would do for items. Are there any questions? Any questions? Let's see. Yes. Three models focused. The lantern is not. Oh, weird. It's really busy. Oh. It could be a Wi Fi feed, but just one to know. Maybe. Oh, I see. It's just the weird glare. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Video. We were, we were ready to go for hours, and now it's a little not focused. Okay. But I hope you guys can see. Hi, Kelly. It's Carmi. Yes. Hi, Carmi. Yes. I, I'm, I'm just going to chime in after um, Danielle and I have done over 100 of these classes. Um, awesome. Uh, the problem is Zoom. Um, they oh, okay. do control some of that. So your oh, okay. quality of your image is excellent. And don't don't worry about it. it, it it's okay. as great as it can go with tiny things. Got it. Yes. It's always about the details. Yeah. And that's how we, because if I go any higher, it'll just, then you can't see a lot of the detail. Yeah. Yeah. No you're worries. good. Yeah. All right. Well, good then. Um, are there any questions I can help out with? Dan, um, I, you're getting a lot of questions about, um, can you use this glue on vinyl? Can you use the glue on other fabrics, on leather? Oh, sure. Uh, so this glue is uh, multi-purpose. So leather, if it's a, if it's like, say, a, a handbag, that's not going to get a ton of, um, movement a ton of like a, a slouchy kind of a cross body is going to get a lot more action than maybe a beautiful evening handbag you know so if there's not a lot of action and bending going on uh, with a leather handbag then yes I use this glue all the time I have a beautiful little blue handbag up front I should have brought it back here um, and it because the leather is rigid on the front is totally fine and it, I don't, you know, handbags can be, we, we definitely have our nice bags, right? And we treat them differently, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, and then our day-to-day -day backpack, cross bodies, stuff like that. So, um, but I have used this glue on tons of purses and handbags and shoes. I did, I think I saw someone ask about if it could be used with rubber. Um, I wouldn't suggest it. it. It Rubber is made to repel things. Um, so it does take quite a, a process that we use for um working on the rubber of shoes um, or, or rubber items. So this one, it, it if it's for display only, like if it's a basketball, some of those have like rubber on them, um, then it would be fine. Display only, totally fine. If it's to be used, I would look for a different glue for sure. Yeah. Because it can be kind of crazy, different glues for different projects. Testing, testing. Everyone lives in different areas of humidity and heat and all of that. So and that does affect how your glues are gonna last. But that was some good questions. And it can be very relaxing as you just kind of sit here and get into the groove of things. You can just end up hours and hours later and you didn't realize, oh, I need to go feed the dog or feed the kids or, you know, I'm sure they'll be screaming at you, but. You can kind of get lost in this. It's very relaxing. It is a, a great form of therapy just to kind of, you know, tune your mind out of a super stressful day. And then if your day job is doing this, then I still do it at night. I <laughs> don't know why. I can't seem to stop. So it's really, it's perfect for me because I do this all day and then again, all night. But it is very enjoyable. I never get tired of seeing how the light um refracts through the stones it's there's always such many there's so many beautiful colors to use different 
patterns and designs. You can get a whole different look from just changing the fill pattern of your stones. So now I'm going to put um, some in the middle. I put some dots there, and I just bet a size 20, SS20, uh, is going to fit perfectly down in here. And I'm using uh, Crystal Clear AB. I'm not sure if the colors are printed on here. I have probably some display pieces, um, but this color is Crystal Clear AB. And look at that. It's almost like I knew what I was about to do with this spitting. <laughs> yep. That's another thing that happens with my eyes is I can see how many, what size. I know what to go for. So it just takes takes a little practice. But that is fitting perfectly. And you'll be able to see a little bit of the pink showing through. So it's okay to have um, your background showing through. You can use that as negative space, negative design space, and it's okay to have those uh, colors coming through or most people recognize the spacing as a gap and they want to fill every single little gap, which is totally fine and you can do that. And it's super fun um, to fill every gap. But the background of this little rubber ducky, he, he was yellow and I painted him blue so that when I do have a gap and there are maybe a couple itsy bitsy gaps, it just looks a little bit more cleaner, a more polished look. So, and again, his beak was red. So I put the orange and the red in here and a couple of jet on his little sunglasses. Oh, pardon me. Um, so yeah, having your background as similar po as possible to your stones is going to give it a more saturated, more cohesive look. But it's super fun to use that negative space um, and have that color show through. Um, I don't have another example. I don't. Oh, maybe. No, I do not. I do not. We'll have to save that for another day. And this glue, um, so I put those dots on there and then I was chatting with you guys. Um, it still is white. As long as your glue is still white uh, uh, when you're using GemTac, um, then you can keep applying your stones. If it starts to turn clear, that means it is drying, it is curing, um, and, you, and you should not keep adding stones because there's a lot of times where people say, I used such and such glue and my stones fell off. Um, I've used hundreds of glues, hundreds of glues. And when the stone falls off, it's because the, uh, we have put the stones in, um, past the point of where the glue was wet. It wasn't accepting that bond any longer. So that takes a little bit of practice to know to not keep adding stones when you think, oh, let's just add a few more with this. And I don't want to add more glue. Sometimes just add more glue. Um, this, I have had to chisel GemTech off of items. We do a ton of bottles and champagne, uh, champagne bottles for Moe. And this is the glue that we mostly use unless they specify that it's going to be um, iced. If, it, if a certain party wants to ice their champagne, then we're going to use a two-part epoxy. But for the most part, this GemTech is fantastic. And they have sent us tons of gigantic bottles. And then we have to take the logo, like they have us, crystallize the logos on these items. And then sometimes if they want to reuse that 15 liter, $3,000 bottle, they have us remove that logo and then add another one. So we chisel it off. Like it's, it's, it's really, really strong stuff. So practice a little bit more with your glues, you know, grab anything from around the house. Let's put some tiny ones in here. Let's get some tiny ones. And every little project is practice. Every little thing you can get your hands on is great practice. Don't lose that pen. Let's just put a couple of the little 12s on here. And um, a good um, thing to know about rhinestones is that usually uh, glass is specified in millimeter and resin is specified in, um, I'm sorry, Glass is usually in SS, meaning stone size. And then resin is usually in MM, which is millimeter. Uh, but you can convert those sizes and um, find out your dimensions because when we do our calculations, we have to know what size those stones are and what size the item is. So that's where all that math can come in. Um, and not always. Sometimes the package might say SS and there might be some PP, which is pearl point, and there might be point back. So it's just been a long time of me learning how many different ways that these stones can appear um, or get packaged. But um, 
with the glass ones, these are going to be with SS and they do, they do um, translate to a millimeter, which is good to know in these, the thirties are going to be a six millimeter, the twenties are a five, the sixteens are a four and twelves are about a three and they do get a lot smaller, which can be fun and horrible at the same time. So <laughs> it depends on what you're trying to cover and how much time you have. I like to put a couple of dots there. We'll just do a little sprinkling, just a sprinkling. And we're only at 1222. We've got plenty of time, you guys. Ooh, I have a question. On the replay, is the chat on the replay? Do I get to go back and see where everybody was from and all that? No, it won't be. Oh, bummer. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, you know what? I think a lot of people do attend our classes because they love the sidebar and they pick oh, up sure. a lot of extra tips and techniques. Right. Yes, for sure. So Kelly, while you're doing that part, I'm going to ask you a couple of um, the questions from people who've never done any blinging before. Right. Um, one is, how long do you let this glue set? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, this one, using 24 hours, um, if you're wanting to, you know, use the purse or the shirt or the blouse or whatever, 24 hours is, is plenty if you're on a rush, uh, but three to five days is fantastic. Just let it sit, let it do its thing. Um, and have a fan on it if you need, if you have, um, if it's, if you're in a cold area, then, uh, but yeah, it doesn't take long at all. I have, I have definitely been, um, glued something on some shoes and worn it that, that night. So <laughs> depends on the emergency <laughs> of the costume or the outfit. You just never know. But yeah, it's, it's so versatile. It's so easy to use. It is one of my favorites and has been for decades you know two more years will be two decades i've been doing this this is crazy i i can't even believe that can't even believe it myself kelly and i i can tell everyone else who's um watching today is as you know i have some things that you blinged 15 years ago that's and they're right. still perfect that's right. yeah. they're absolutely perfect so i oh, I, awesome. I definitely know the technique is sound right. um uh, we got a couple of questions to uh, um, from people who are probably printing a lot of vinyl on their Cricut. And oh, so sure. how is gem tack when it's applied to something that's vinyl, like a, a cut so, vinyl? So for cups and and, and uh, vinyls on cups, yes, yes. you can totally um, do that. Um, and when you get this glue wet, it will turn back white a little bit, a little milky looking, uh, but it's not going to fall off. It's not going to run off. Uh, just wash your cups, you know, don't, don't soak them and it's, it'll go back to being clear. Now, when you see that glue turning white, um, it could be that there's just too much glue. So practice using less glue. Remember how we have, um, see how right now on, if I can get it close enough, uh, see how it's still kind of milky right through here where I had too much glue. Let me try to block that. There we go. Um, and then over here, you don't see any glue. So using the right amount of glue can totally help um, not see that kind of uh, white show back up. But once it's, it's dry again, it will be clear. So tumblers is totally fine. Sand your uh, vinyl first. Give it that little extra grip of that surface area uh, to grab onto. Um, and you'll, you'll be just fine. Um, but if it's a vinyl on a shirt, uh, nope, it will not stick to HTV. Uh, most glues will not. Um, so that's that's super tricky. You have to kind of cut out in your design to where the gem tag can hit the fabric. And it's pretty good stuff. I mean, uh, I have machine washed plenty of my items over the years using gem tag, and they are just fine. Um, but I can't recommend everyone machine wash and machine dry. I put my stuff through the ringer um, just, to, just to see it. Is it going to come off? Is it going to last? Uh, you know, um, and usually it does. But uh, I don't recommend anyone using, uh, you know, hand gluing items and then putting them in the wash and the dryer. You know, hand wash your items and they'll they'll last a lot, lot longer. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, for sure. Any any other question? Anything? And else? the other thing is, uh, a couple people noticed that you didn't sand the flamingo. 
I didn't because it's display only. It's going to be sitting on a shelf. Totally fine. Yeah. Totally fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, going back to your precision bottle, there yes. are two questions. How do you sure. put the glue in the bottle? Oh, and, sure. And, and does that pen end up sticking in the glue? Uh, well, I don't ever have a problem with it sticking in, in the glue, uh, but it is made to, like, after you've done your gluing for the day, keep your pen in it. I leave my bottle laying down or upside down, like an old shot glass or something. Um, and it doesn't, it, I've not had that problem, but it's, it's, if it does just yank that out. If you need to clean out your, uh, tip there, then we've, oh, I've got one right here. Ooh, here's a fun little tip. And this can work with lots of other items. Uh, not just ours. So you've got this metal tip. It's a tension twist. All you have to do is yank that off. We have to cut that tip as well. Um, so inside there, you see how there is some glue kind of building up. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully you can see it. Um, you can remove your pin. And then we've got these um, cute little, uh, little when you have braces, little brushes for cleaning braces or uh, for your teeth. And then you can totally get that glue out so once you get your hot water in your sink, you can easily clean these guys out when you get that clog, uh, because it, sometimes that does happen. So this glue has been in there for quite some time, and I didn't have a big clog, but I should have, you know, I do like to clean a lot of my uh, tips all the time. So, And then if you get it on your fingers, it's okay. It's completely non-toxic glue. Just have your napkin near. Don't get it on your clothes, because it does like the fabric. It is going to be hard to get out of your fabrics. And then to fill this, uh, let's, there's a bubble there. Awesome. So you're going to take your uh, big bottle of gem tack and just place it inside and squeeze more glue in and then put your cap right back on. And that's it. Super, super easy. And then place this on the end here and give it a little tension twist. That is it. And we're going to put our pin right back inside. If I had the right glasses on, I could maybe see that, but you know, there we go. And that's it. I've used this bottle uh, since 1991 in the dot painting and all kinds of different uh, scenarios. So it's my favorite shape, the softness of the bottle. Um, it doesn't create a callus on my knuckle here because we're we're using this hours and hours and hours of the day. So I've tried so many bottles out there. And for me, it works. Um, it works fantastic. So, yeah, that was great. That was a good one. Let me put my uh, lid back on here and I will soak this out later to clean my little brush because we keep our little tools near. Yeah, you never know when you might have a clog or a, a weirdness with your bottles because the glues. And you can put lots of other glues in these bottles, uh, but usually if a glue comes in a tube, um, it might be a, a the kind of glue that cures uh, when it's when it hits the air. So I wouldn't recommend those glues in these bottles, but if it's a um, white uh, craft glue like Gem Tack is, um, then it's fantastic. Fantastic. It's good stuff. Oh, I'll keep that right there. Kelly, right. Tina, Tina yeah. would like to know what kind of surface you normally work on because of course the glue will, will cling. Yes. Um, I hate to use the word normal for us because we we do so many things all the time. Um, uh, Paper, plastic, metal, Gym Tack works on all of those items. It's the environment that might be the, the question. So nothing exterior. It might last a little while, but it's not going to last through a winter. Um, when this glue freezes, it can uh, crackle and break off. Um, and then in heat, it can get a little, um, uh, let's see, what's the word? Um, loose, I guess. Like it can kind of smear. Or, or yes. the gravity from the yeah the gravity from the stones can kind of pull that down, so I don't recommend exterior use. But um, if you're in a mild climate, then sure it, it's possible it could be great. Yeah. And Kelly, your tabletop to yes. help yourself, like is it paper? Is it fabric? Oh. Uh, so the tabletop that we uh, what you're seeing here is actually it's a neoprene mat, and we call that our work mat. We have small ones on the michaels.com site, maybe even the large ones too. This is the large one. Um, and the reason why I like this mat is just years ago, we were doing a lot of the bottles for Moe, and I didn't like the sound of that glass, heavy glass, touching my desktop. So I lined everything with just, you know, bath towels, right? And then there's lint. 
and Lent was getting in my glue. And I'm like, oh, there's Lent. There's always a problem. How can I fix this problem? Um, and then, uh, and then plus with the noise, I didn't like that sound of it still, even with the bath towel, you could still hear the glass hitting the, the wood table. Um, and so uh, husband was throwing out some old uh, surf, surf suits, scuba suits. And he was like, here, cut this up neoprene, use it for your desk. And I was like, I would love that. Thank you. And so uh, for some reason, it took me not long. I cover every desk with neoprene. Um, it helps me flip the stones. That's what I realized after the fact. Um, I do have the trays. I don't have any at this desk. Um, if there's a tray, here we go. So you can get the little um, little jewel trays at Michael's and you shake them and sometimes they flip over. But what happens when there's a tray on my desk um, as I work, I'm going to flip that tray. It, it will not, no matter what, I see some nods. Yes, yes. I'm going to flip that tray. I had all the artist palettes that I got at Michael's with a little different contain, little different sections. I would flip that tray. I swear to you, if it's, I'm going to flip it. If it's on my desk, I'm going to flip it. So after I flipped it, I'm like, I'm just going to use it on the desk, right? And then I realized if I just rolled my finger through them, they hit each other and the texture of the neoprene helps them flip. And it's fantastic. And years later, when I developed this tool, I realized that having the soft surface helps me not jab at my stone so much. When you're on a paper plate or in the lid of a jar, um, people tend to press a much firm, more firm with their pickup tools, no matter which one it is. Um, and then that's going to put more residue, more wax buildup onto your items. And then you got to clean it more. So it took years for me to realize, oh, oh, that's less I have to do here. Oh, it's better for there. Oh, it's not scratching the items. All of these things go together uh, to help us do our job faster, stronger, smarter, all of that. So you'll never see me work on a raw tabletop. It won't happen. It It's like, I can't even do it. I can't even, it's like if you didn't brush your teeth before you left the house, like you just can't even operate. I got to have those certain things in order for me to work efficiently. Um, and then we realized it was helping other people. So, oh, then let's brand it. Let's make it cute. Let's put the size. I have a size chart down the side. Let's, you know, put some other information on it to help, you know, people learn as they're using our products too. So everything together works amazing. And it's funny that um, we even had a focus group years ago uh, and we put their items in the, on the mat. And then we gave them a lidded jar, like a peanut butter jar lid uh, or a paper plate. And you could physically see them, their posture changed when they had the softer mat completely changed and then they weren't bearing down on their tools their pickup tools because we gave them lots of pickup tools and we're like which one did you like how did you like this one well this one kind of is melty this one kind of smeared and I'm like exactly so it was it was really cool to see um, how people's posture can change uh, just by changing the surface of the items and um, you know I'm a weirdo with noises and it makes it quiet for me so. <laughs> yeah that was a long story but yeah that's what I'm using neoprene <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Also, um, we we have some of your regular followers who are obviously awesome. um, learning to be expert blingers, and we have some very new people here today. So, awesome. Kelly, like one of the questions I got was, would you are you going to fill in this whole flamingo, or oh. like where do you go from here? Oh, so it was not my intention to fill it all the way in. I wanted to do the border that was filled in heavily, but then just to give him a little twinkle is just enough. You can totally fill it in. Um, but once I place these stones, if I want to go back and keep adding more, you're going to have more negative space than you would if you would have just glued it all and to pack it all in. Um, so it's a different technique. Uh, so I like it sprinkled and then I'll fill in these sides and have that more heavy on these edges. So it's really up to the user and how you want to decorate your items. Yeah. Any, anything goes. You can do full bling or just a little twinkling. Kelly, do you ever put your um, crystals down first to see if they fit? Um, because oh, people sure. noticed right away you could eyeball that center row. Yeah. Without yeah. even testing. For sure. Yeah. And we call that a dry fit. Um, so let's take some 30s. And and that's a, a fantastic thing to do to know if you want um, that heavy coverage or if you even have enough stones to do it. So with a 30, I could center that line and it would look awesome. Um, but with using the two lines of the 12s here, uh, it fits or, or 16s, it fits a little better. I could probably or was it 
yeah, it's 12s. So two lines of 12s. And there's different fill patterns. So this is just a kind of a linear or a grid fill pattern. So the stones are straight down and is it going to focus? Yeah, Ooh, almost, almost. It wants to get my hand. There we go. So the stones are straight down and straight across from each other. And we call that a grid uh, pattern or linear. And I bet if I was to do more of a honeycomb on the other side, it would fit three rows. So that's where we can show our customers, our clients, um, you know, different price budgets, because to have two rows of something is going to cost a lot less than having three rows. So we would totally do that with using a dry fit process just by placing it on here without any glue. And then that shows them that, yes, three rows does fit perfectly on this border here. So if you were wanting to uh, mass produce, let's see, hundreds of these, your budget will be tremendously different doing three rows, two or three times, four times around, times four. Now you've got the 16 different bars here to do. So coverage and spacing, it adds up really quick. So this would totally fit perfectly three rows of these SS12s. Yeah. That was a fantastic question. And there's um, about, we we normally use six fill patterns um, typically, and that can be from your uh, sprinkle fill, your grid. We have premium grid to where when you've got even those little SS fives and threes, we'll put those in the center of these little gaps if they really want that crazy coverage. And we call that premium grid because it's double the stones, double the cost, and I'm going to bill you double for making me do it. So, so. Oh, and there's honeycomb, premium honeycomb. We've got that one over here on a license plate frame. So that's kind of staggering. Um, you still get that kind of a honeycomb stacked in there, um, but it's just using two different sizes. So you, ha you have a pretty good fill, uh, but there is a nice pattern going on. I wish it would show up a little better, but um, so that's our premium honeycomb. And regular honeycomb is, oh, like on my, my cup here. Let me not spill my water. So that's just going to be a honeycomb. And then we've got sprinkle with all these shapes. These are leftovers uh, from when I did the Fiat last year. The back end, the purples, the beautiful gold and purple. So even adding different fill patterns to the same item can create interest, depth of your design, stuff like that. And let's see, there's also contour where you kind of outline the same shape over and over. So if I would have gone around his body, it would have ended up kind of in the middle. Or I could have made some wing marks to have a, a better design there so there's just so many ways you can approach your fill patterns and your projects uh, it's limitless like there's just no there's no way to count them all like because you could change it up so much just a little bit and then you have a whole different look or a different feel so um, and a lot of times as you see with the the fiat back here um, i prefer a sprinkle fill um, on those big car parts or on the big items um, there's uh, a couple of amazing artists that do honeycomb they just do honeycomb one size and they might have some fillers on the ends um on a car and they do a beautiful job but in my in my design eye those beautiful sexy cars have that motion and i don't want to see a straight line on those cars even though they're beautifully done um a sprinkle fill kind of accents the item without overtaking it because when you see those straight lines on a curvy item you you see straight lines first that's all you see. And then you say, oh, that's a, that's a, you know, such and such car. Uh, but in my silly brain, I see those hard lines. I want them to be soft uh, and sprinkle fill does that for me. So I hope you guys enjoy my sprinkle fill as much as I do because <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Kelly, I, I personally, I, I love honeycomb is my favorite. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I learned honeycomb from you and, oh, good, and, good. Um, awesome. So <laughs> But um, sprinkle sprinkle is great, but I think it's harder because there's all these sizes it and possibilities. Be. Yep, it can be. Uh, and it took me practice. And I went from, you know, separating all the sizes in my little Michael's art palette that I used to have years ago. I probably still have it in a box somewhere. Um, or, yeah, no, I don't have it in here. No, Boss Ninja Susie keeps cleaning my office and I lose things. So she took all my cool stuff away. Just kidding. Um, and I would sit there and it would take me uh, days to do a little cell phone because I used to do nothing but cell phones uh, back in 2004 and five and six. Um, and then I forget, I forget why, probably because I spilled all my little shapes and I was like, oh, now my threes are mixed with my fives and sevens and nines. 
And that kind of helped me to not have to stress over thinking what size, what size should fit here? What, what about now? And now I just go for it. And if there's gaps, which there are, there's some big gaps in this one. I'm trying not to spill. Um, but because the background is that beautiful iridescent purple mica, it accentuates that fill pattern. So I could have gone through and put in lots of threes in here and gotten crazy, but that adds many, many hours to your time. And, you know, all of us have family. We, we can't, we just can't spend 16 hours straight on something and not have the rest of the world. So if you do have that time, then sure, hit all those SS threes and fives and get crazy in your design. Um, but I learned after years of doing it, that if it's more than, you know, 12 inches away from your eye, you can't see them anyway. So, you know, I was spending hours and hours and days and days with those itty bitty stones. And like on here, there's plenty of little SS threes on here. And so now you're probably 10 inches from a camera. You can't see, you can't see it, even though it's not a great feed. You still couldn't see it if, even if you were here in person with me. So, <laughs> so yeah, it just depends on your, your mood and the tone you want to have on your project. Um, for the most part, you know, I like to go bigger these days because I have aged quite a bit, uh, lots of different pairs of glasses. I can't see anymore. And our stuff is normally large. So I want that larger pop and ping from these bigger stones because most of our work is meant to be seen from a distance. And if you put just tiny stones, even though they look beautiful close up at your, at your desk in your hands, when it's more than 10 feet away, it, loose, it looks like glitter. And glitter is wonderful, but you just paid a ton of money and a ton of time to use those stones and those facets. So I want to use the larger stones. That's That's just how I've kind of graduated into uh doing these bigger projects because um you know it's glitter from a even if you guys are in traffic and you see a license plate frame sometimes you see the ones that are all one size little ss12 uh in honeycombs or they're actually point backs um and then you might see the big chunky monkey ones you see those ones from 50 feet away but the straight ones the little this size once you're you only see them when you're in traffic like you're right next to that person so it just depends on how you want that flash to be seen or that ping ping pop pop so yeah it took me a long time to use those big stones but especially on license plates this is a 30 and a 16 and i would have normally never put an ss30 on anything oh clutch my pearls i would just not do it but now i bet there better be 30s near me because i want to see it i'm not going to put all this work in one by one to have it not be seen. So go big or go home, <laughs> right? Kelly, I, I I don't want you to have to become a glue class today. Um, <laughs> I'm here obviously, for it. <laughs> obviously, the crystals are great and they will work, but they will yes. work on a surface when you're using the right glue. Yes. And so people have noticed occasionally you use an epoxy resin. Sure. And uh, a lot of people are concerned about epoxy fumes and time and everything like that. So when you say epoxy, what do you mean? Um, all of that. So there are hundreds of different kinds of epoxy glues, two-part epoxy glues. And of course, if I had one, um, I do have one. I do have, so at Michael's, uh, they'll, they have Loctite has a two part. There's probably Devcon also at uh, Michael's and there also will be Bob Smith. So that's going to be in two bottles. Um, and I know I have some because I want to show you, uh, but it's a hardener and the resin and you mix them two together, mix the two together and you get this beautiful, clear, um, liquidy glue. And we've got lots of, um, do you have a, a, a Bob Smith, even though it's the, I think there's right there, straight ahead, where your hand is, straight back. Maybe? Yes, in a package. Yes! Boss Ninja to the rescue! Yes, thank you. All right, so this one you can find at Michael's. Perfect. Um, and there's different time. You can get a five, a one minute, a five minute, a 10, a 15. Um, Bob Smith does have a 20 minute, but that's called a finishing uh epoxy the 30 minute uh you can get 60 minute 90 minute depends on how much time you want to work um, the longer the cure the better the bond and um with this the faster curing um two-part epoxies those will smell really strong they smell like when you're getting your hair done um that's just very very uh strong smell um two-part epoxies 
Many of them can be more um, toxic than others. Uh, we, we, we try to use the best on the market uh, and we're doing our best to get those into Michael's very soon. Um, but we've got glues that are specially made for us. Um, even the ones from Austria or from Germany that we get, uh, even the, um, the, Oh, why am I losing my, uh, the data sheet, the SDS um, says, you know, unless you have an allergic reaction or are very sensitive to epoxy products, um, no PPE is required. So that's fantastic. Uh, I still encourage people to wear your gloves, your mask, uh, your, I'm sorry, your respirator. Um, if you're any form of sensitive to these products, because, you know, they're strong for a reason. They have to last through you know, environments that we put, we do break calipers. Those get hot. Those get really hot. So we have to use glues that can stand up to those heats and those uh, stresses and strains um, and the, the outdoors, you know, freezing temperatures and hot stuff. So two-part epoxies is what we're going to do for a lot of stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And there's some that are thicker than others, some that are super runny. Um, we've got one that a batch coming really soon, and I hope to get it um, on the michaels.com site. Um, and it does not move, and it helps us do the car parts where the stones would normally slide. When you're working on a vertical surface, epoxies are going to slide down. So that glue has little to no slide. It's so dreamy. Um, I love it so much, and I haven't had it in weeks because we ran out because I gave it to all you guys. So. The big batch is supposed to be here early October, so hopefully that's going to be in two weeks. So I need some glue. We have a big project that just came in, and I'm waiting for my glue. So, yep. Kelly, I got a question. Is there yes. anything? Is there anything you wouldn't put a crystal on? No. I don't. I can't think. I can't think of a thing. A single thing because I want to see everything crystallized. Everything. Yeah, everything. Even my dog. Yeah, if she will sit, sit sit still, I would bling her. <laughs> but she's kind of furry. <laughs> Perfect. Anything. I, I can't think of one thing that I don't want to. Okay, so oh, let's try um, this. Let's try that. because whenever we do these class, people hear everything. So what is a premium honeycomb? Oh, um, um, that is on here on the license plate frame. So honeycomb is normal honeycomb is going to be, you know what, let me grab, I've got a better, um, a way better example. And they're right across, let me grab uh, two seconds, two seconds. I've got beautiful samples here. Okay. This will hopefully be in focus because it's bigger on the screen. So we'll go through the six, and this is totally 101 stuff. This is just showing you guys fill patterns. Um, and I can open these up. Um, so there's no glare. So this is going to be your grid, right? Straight up and down, straight across. Easy peasy. And there's going to be gaps. You will see the background of whatever you're working on. Um, so that's the grid. Then we've got, here's the regular honeycomb. So it's straight, back and forth, up and down, just like the uh, honeycomb in a beehive, right? Those stones fit super, super close together. You barely see the background color. You can kind of see my hand going through it, uh, but that's normal honeycomb. And then we've got premium grid. So it's the same straight up and down, back and forth and focus. And then there's tiny stones in between all those, making it really packed in a really beautiful fill pattern, right? And then we've got, premium honeycomb which is oh, come on open up did i tape it no which is they're kind of set a little bit different so you still have your your they're fitting into the little divots that the honeycomb kind of makes but using different sizes so you've got two different sizes making this premium honeycomb and then on our little samples here we've got down to 12s and 3s so we like to show our clients different pricing and these are in certain square inches which means easy calculation for your larger projects and then of course we've got the uh my favorite of the wrinkle fill right and that's going to take at least at least three sizes to make that look beautiful and you can see the background of the item there will be gaps there will always be gaps um so having it a similar color helps out tremendously 
to complement the look or to accent it. And then here's a great version of contour fill. So that's when you have a shape and you want to outline it over and over again. So you see that the unfoiled here, I just outlined this flower over and over again with the 30s. And then inside the logo, this petal is all 20s. This one is 16s, this one's 12s, and it goes down to eight and sixes. So that just shows the different detail that you still can get using contour, um, but it can get a little crazy and it does cause a, your eye a lot of attention to that item. So it's best to choose your fill pattern wisely, practice on things um, using different things. So it's, it's a lot of it is the same, it's the same technique, the same glue, uh, but laying your stones in differently can help um, your item look you know, a lot better. So yeah, but I love all these fill patterns and we do show our clients how they can, you know, accentuate, get more bang for their buck out of their budget. Um, or if they want to get crazy and get real intricate, then let's go. <laughs> it's fun stuff. I love these. I love these. Thank you for okay. sharing those, um, Kelly. Yeah, though I think that that yeah. I I attached on the sidebar a couple times today. Um, I took some of your um, the names that you have of your fill patterns, and I have yes. uh, the applications guide. So Fantastic. I'll keep posting that up for um, a reminder. Good, um, good, good, good. Kelly, uh, where today today we had planned that you would show you know how to one up you know an everyday home decor item. Yes. And so, of course, after after you do that, everyone's like, how do I price it? Oh, for sure. So uh, pricing will be different with everyone, right? Um, and a, a good way to start is, of course, what is your your cost of your supplies? All right. You've got you've got all these supplies, you've got your work mat. Um, and it doesn't stop there because you've got your cost of your supplies and then how long did it take you to do the item? Sometimes people are wanting to price things that they've, they've never done this before. They don't know how long it takes them. So that's the part that I can't help you with. I need to know your numbers. I need you to sit there and do, you know, these are fairly inexpensive. Get five of these frames, sit down, time yourself. How many can you decorate in how many minutes, right? And then what do you need to get paid per hour? Um, and that's where a lot of us, even myself, have problems. I'm like, oh, well, you know, when I started, ah, 10 bucks an hour, that's awesome, you know? And then I went up to 15 and, and 20 and so on and so on. Uh, but then your expenses get larger the more you do stuff. You have to get, you know, a decent chair, good posture. Now you have the lighting. You have to add all these things in. And now you're doing maybe logos and designs, like someone had said, the, the vinyls and the printing. Um, your machines cost money. So that has to go into your expenses. The lights that you use, your house, if you're working from home, um, all of that has to go into your expenses, your operating costs, uh, and that's going to get you your best price. And then comes a day where you have to, hey, mom, come help me glue this. Well, you're not going to pay your mom? what she has to get paid too so you have to pay your assistant and then you realize oh now you're not a hobby anymore and now you're you're a small business and now you have to pay insurance uh, all the stuff all the stuff comes and then if you didn't incorporate that into your oh this is i'm just gonna charge five bucks for this when you paid three dollars for it you still like you have to price for profit. Um, and it took me many years, not going to lie, many years. And I still make errors on my pricing. Um, but think of all of those things. And then once you move out of the house, you now have rent. But if you were doing it properly, you would have been charging your square footage of your house that you use, keep a section in your home. And that is your little studio. What if it, if it's four feet by five feet, I started in one shelf in a closet in a 600 square foot studio. That was my space. I kept all of my rhinestone things in that corner. Like that was it. And then slowly it kept getting bigger. Like we all know, well, I gotta have all the colors and I gotta have all the paints. I gotta have all the name brands of all the paints. I gotta, yeah. And then that's where the husband's like, so do you think you can keep it out of my kitchen at least? So yeah, once we got a house, it was in every bedroom. My dining room was the main office. Then there's like a weird living room that we didn't use. That was where I had three or four assistants there. The garage was half the shipping and half his car. Two bedrooms upstairs. It got crazy. And then there were people at my house at all hours. That poor guy, he works nights. He just wants to, you know, be on the couch watching his history channel in his shorts. You can't. There's people here working. Put some clothes on. So 
working from home, it's a whole different monster than having your own office. But all of that is a price. Uh, so it breaks my heart to see someone working, you know, hours and hours or days and days on their items. And they have only charged, you know, 150 bucks for like a tumbler, like, like a, these gigantic tumblers. This one's a, this one's a really sweet one. I'm not going to lie. Um, and I keep going to tumblers because it is a huge part of the, the craft industry. Um, so I'm not sure what camera you guys are seeing, but we have this small little 12 ounce one um, and I can knock this out in two and a half, three hours or a gigantic 30 ounce one. Um, the cost of just the stones in this is crazy. Um, the quality of the stones brings up your price and the time that it takes. Um, it, it can be many, many hours, especially if you're brand new. It used to take me, I uh, think was... 16 hours over like three different nights to do one cell phone because my detail was so crazy. And I was like, Oh, well, nobody would ever pay that because I didn't charge what I was supposed to. Once I started charging properly, my client base changed. Um, so that's a, a huge thing that we do lecture in our group, uh, rhinestoneartist.com. Pricing is huge. Um, and different projects. Oh, well, they want, you know, just the, just the stripes of the shoe, just the stripes. And then the next week they want the whole thing filled in. Oh, well, I knocked out those stripes so quick. It won't take much. It's going to take time still. And unless you know your square inches and how big and how many stones, it's hard to price. So you have to know your numbers before that. And the only way you can do all of that is to practice on your own dime before you even start trying to sell. I think I practiced for um, two, almost three years before I tried to go professional level. It was like my little side hobby at night. Um, so it, it happens over years or you might go viral and you get thrown into it and then you got to call me to help you out and, I, and then you're going to get my prices. So, so that's happened too. Kelly, yeah. I, I so appreciate everything that you've said about, um, be, you know, how you, how you started, um, yeah. you know, clearly now you're at the top of your game. I have told everyone oh, that if you kind. To learn how to work with flat backs, um, you have to go to the original and oh, thank uh, I'm you. sure that you're the reason why um, we are doing as much flat backing as we're doing. And so I thank you so, so much. Um, I used all your tips and techniques to do my very first tumbler. And I'll tell you, it took me 16 hours over a Saturday and a Sunday and yep. three packages of crystals. Right. And so there's no way I could sell it. I have to keep it forever. But you would, you would think so, but you never know. Something that speaks to someone else. They're like, here's my card. I want to buy that. You just never, ever know. You never know. But uh, again, so our hour has flown. Oh, oh um, my goodness. <laughs> thank you, uh, Kelly. Thank you so much. And um, we definitely would love to have you come back. Awesome. And um, I will urge everyone to follow Kelly on social media and, of course, John Bede. And if anybody does anything with the new flatbacks at Michael's, please um, right. share and tag all of us so we can see it. That's right. All these beautiful colors. Um, and then I also want to thank you guys for having me on. Thank you to Michael's. Thank you to John Bede. Um, this has been a wonderful opportunity. And I'm super stoked to be on here and helping everybody get more into the sparkling up everything you can. Uh, and then e let's, let's see even more. Let's see what we can do for next time. So I'm super excited. And then I'll see you next week, Carmi, at class. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you, guys.